Okay, so Alpha is in the business of making antimatter and studying it, making very precise measurements on the atoms of antihydrogen, which we can create here at CERN and trap in our Alpha devices. Alpha is the only experiment that's doing this today. We're able to actually produce lots of antihydrogen, trap it, and then study its properties. The idea is to test if this very fundamental antimatter system has the same exact properties as hydrogen in normal matter. That's what the standard model tells us. Those two things need to be identical. So we're doing very precise measurements on antihydrogen in order to test that assumption. This is one of the most fundamental predictions of the standard model. Now, we do two types of measurements in general with antihydrogen. The first is to essentially shine light on it to study its internal structure. We're using lasers to see that antihydrogen has the same spectrum as hydrogen. That is, does it absorb and emit exactly the same color of light that hydrogen does? We've been doing that since about 2016 with lasers. Last time we ran the experiment was before this shutdown here at CERN in 2018. So we've been off for two years now preparing for the next round of experiments. The goal with the spectroscopy experiment is to measure as precisely as possible the internal structure of the antihydrogen atom. In addition to that, we have a brand new experiment which was just commissioned in 2018 whose purpose is to study gravity with antihydrogen. What happens if I have some antimatter here in Earth and I drop it? We actually don't know the answer to that question. There are a lot of predictions about that, but we want to actually test that experimentally. Does it fall? Does it fall in exactly the same way as hydrogen would, as normal matter? This is a, a really groundbreaking experiment. We must find the answer to this. So we just built this new experiment we call Alpha G for gravity and turned it on in 2018, but we didn't quite get to the point of making any of these measurements yet. So during this shutdown period, we've been upgrading and modifying all of our experimental apparatus to get ready for the start of BEAM in August of 2021. Right? That's the first time we'll be able to have antiprotons again here from the antiproton decelerator and also from the new ring called ELENA, which will slow our antiprotons down even further and allow us to be more efficient. So, past two years, we've been changing things, modifying, improving, so that when the beam comes back, we're ready to resume these experiments with trapped antihydrogen. The first priority for us in the new round of experiments is to study this gravity question. We're gonna to try to get alpha G to work, make some antihydrogen, trap it, in our vertical trapping device and then drop it and see what happens. We want to, in the first uh, experiment, see does it actually fall the way most theories predict it should? And then in the longer term, does it fall at exactly the same rate, assuming it falls, as normal matter? So this is the first time we've been able to contemplate an experiment like this to actually have it ready to go. and. We're really looking forward to starting up again in August to, to get this machine running again. In the meantime, we have some new results that will be published shortly. And one technique which we find is really revolutionary for our type of experiments. Uh, this will be published shortly in Nature. This has to do with a technique to cool antihydrogen down to very low temperatures. And when I talk about low temperatures, I mean close to absolute zero. When we make the antihydrogen and hold on to it, it's already very cold. 0.5 degrees above absolute zero, all right? That's really cold. Just to be able to hold on to it, it has to be produced that cold. And that's been the main challenge to get this experiment to work over the last decade and a half. Can you make cold antihydrogen, which then you can trap? We use a kind of a magnetic bottle 
that holds the ant to hydrogen, keeps it away from normal matter in an ultra-high vacuum. That's what we call an antihydrogen trap. It's really a, a force field, if you will, for, for neutral antimatter. So we've perfected that technique, Alpha is alone in being able to do that. And in the last five years, we've learned how to measure things with these trapped antihydrogen atoms, predominantly using lasers. We've studied the internal structure. Any type of experiment that you would do on antihydrogen is better if it's not moving very fast, right? That's a measurement of temperature. Temperature is a measurement of how fast the atoms of antihydrogen are moving. The slower they are, the more sensitive you are in to just about everything you would try to measure. In particular, the gravity experiment is very sensitive to that. Now imagine I have a, a bottle of antihydrogen that's sitting vertically, and the atoms are bouncing around inside this magnetic bottle. The higher the temperature, the faster they're bouncing around. Now I release them. I would like to see them drop or go up if that's what happens, but I want the gravity to be the dominant effect. But if they're bouncing around, they may fly up and then go down, right? Or they may just hit the wall before they even start to go down. If they were really cold, they would be much more sensitive to just falling, right? So even at 0.5 degrees above absolute zero, you're not that sensitive to gravity. What we've developed now is a technique which is very common in modern physics with matter, which is called laser cooling. This is, uses lasers to slow the motion of individual antihydrogen atoms so that they're not bouncing around so much. And in fact, they would also be more localized within this bottle if they're not moving very fast, right? So laser cooling is very, very difficult with hydrogen for lots of technical reasons, but having to do with the internal structure of the atom and the type of lasers that you're able to produce. In order to laser cool antihydrogen, our colleagues in Canada have developed a very precise pulsed laser that excites a particular transition in hydrogen or antihydrogen. It's a very difficult laser to make, it takes a lot of pulsed energy, and the wavelength of this laser is in the far ultraviolet, which means it doesn't propagate through air, it has to stay in vacuum. Technically a very, very challenging experiment to do, even with matter. People don't routinely laser cool hydrogen of normal matter. So now we're going to publish in Nature that we've succeeded in using this laser to cool antihydrogen down. This is not in the gravity experiment yet, this was in the horizontal spectroscopy device, but we see a dramatic effect of being able to cool antihydrogen down. Now you can imagine that the trap is kind of like a, a well, and the antihydrogen is bouncing around in the well. If you cool it down, it tends to go to the bottom of the well. That means it's both colder and more localized, right? This is just good news in every way for any type of sensitive experiment you would try to do with antimatter. You know better where it is, so it overlaps your laser more, more often, and the velocity is greatly reduced. So all the nasty effects that have to do with the motion of atoms in spectroscopy are, are lessened. We've already managed to demonstrate an effect on the spectroscopic measurement using the cold antihydrogen. That's also a part of the Nature article. We've measured a spectrum of this fundamental transition that we're always studying in antihydrogen, and it gets narrower. That means the frequency dependence is smaller. We're localizing that frequency more accurately, or we're able to in the future. So for us, this is really a game changer. We're able to both get more sensitivity to gravity because these things will be moving less and localized. We drop them, they'll fall more as a, as a sort of clump than as a, a gas that explodes out of the trap. So that just in, improves our sensitivity to gravity. It also improves the precision with which we're able to measure spectroscop spectroscopy, spectro spectric, spectro excuse me, spectroscopic lines in antihydrogen. 
So this is all good. We're really looking forward to getting started. Go ahead. Okay, so we're about to put a new result in nature that has to do with cooling down atoms of antihydrogen that we've already produced and are trapped in our magnetic bottle. Now, they're already pretty cold. In order to trap them at all, they had to have a temperature of less than 0.5 degrees Kelvin. That's 0.5 degrees above absolute zero. So it starts out pretty cold. What we've done now is use a very special laser that's developed by our alpha collaborators in Canada to further slow the motion of antihydrogen atoms that are trapped in our magnetic bottle. Now, why is that a good thing? The idea is that anytime you're trying to interact with an atom, either with a laser or study something about its internal structure, it's better if it's not moving very fast. You can interact with it for longer time. It'll stay within your laser beam for longer time. And in particular, the gravity measurement that we would like to do when we start up again in August of 2021 is extremely sensitive to this motion of trapped atoms. So you have atoms in a vertical magnetic bottle in the alpha G experiment, G stands for gravity, and they're bouncing around. Now you're gonna release them and see where they go. We wanna see if they fall down or go up or how fast they fall, but if they're moving too fast in the beginning, you're just less sensitive. They may fly in an arc before they go down, they hit the walls, they annihilate. If you could just nail them down a little better, you're much sensitive. If they just could have drop, if that's the dominant effect. So cooling them down with this laser is revolutionary for us. This will make us much, much more sensitive to this gravitational behavior, which is very, very weak. Gravity is a weak force. The effects are small. It's very hard to do this experiment in general. This will make it much easier. At the same time, we've already demonstrated in the original Alpha machine that slowing the atoms down makes the study of their internal structure easier. That means studying the light that they like to absorb and emit, the color that they have, if you will, that's much more accessible if they're moving more slowly. That's just obvious in, in, in these type of experiments. There are effects that have to do with the velocity that are, are just minimized. And we're really looking forward to getting started again in August to try this technique again and use it in a real experiment. The Nature article talks about demonstrating this laser cooling, it's called, in antimatter. By the way, laser cooling in normal hydrogen is not something that people have done consistently. There have been demonstrations, but it's not a standard technique. To do this in, in antimatter is a real experimental tour de force. And we think it's, it's really a game changer for everything that we do in this building with antihydrogen. Um, I'd just like to add that we can't wait to get back to work. Two years of no experiments at this stage of, of, of the development of this branch of science was really difficult for us. Um, everything was working when we shut down in 2018. We were making great strides. We had turned on the Alpha G machine for the first time. So we just can't wait to get back to work and, and start interrogating antimatter again to, to push the, the boundaries of what we're doing here. So it's a really exciting time. A lot of work to do. It's been difficult during the, the COVID time, but uh, we're hoping that it doesn't get worse and that we can start up in August and, and get back to doing science. <laughs> What's the probability for antihydrogen to fall down? I'm not allowed to guess. Uh, I'm an experimental scientist, and I have to be prepared for either outcome with no bias. And in fact, we go to great lengths to design Alpha G so that it's not assuming the answer to that question. 99% right? of theorists will tell you that it will fall like normal hydrogen doesn't matter to me. 
I need to get the truth and that my experiment needs to be completely unbiased towards that truth. So I don't really care. I, I just have to measure it. Um, <laughs> that question is maybe too technical for, for uh, the, the, the short result is, answer is, we're trying to measure what gravity interacts with when it comes to antimatter. The, the normal assumption about gravity is that there's this thing called the gravitational mass and to be distinguished from the inertial mass and it's the gravitational mass that determines the response of uh, a particle to, to matter, to, to gravity rather. We've only ever measured that with normal matter. So it, it, the essence of what we're doing is to see if there's anything else, if there is some difference between how antimatter in, interacts with gravity and how matter interacts with gravity. So, you're asking me the question that I'm trying to, 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 to measure. And again, most theories would say it's just about mass. Gravity is about curvature of space time. It shouldn't matter if it's matter or antimatter. But that's never been directly tested experimentally. And that's why there are three experiments in this hall who are trying to do that. <laughs>